Gaming is dying. Now, gaming isn't actually on the decline fiscally or even in terms of raw gamers. Gaming isn't about to go out for milk and never come back, nor are your gamer machines going to explode and return us all to the peaceful, violence-free times before Higginbottom created Pong. No, what's actually dying is the idea of making a good, unique game that makes money rather than making the optimal product to match revenue with ideal monetization mechanisms for proper sales flow. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We need to start by talking about how AAA game companies make copy-paste games to achieve financial success, but then fail to see how actually finishing out the second half of the goddamn game also helps achieve that. These games all launched with more bugs in them than EDF. And as a cherry on top, some games like to dabble around with a little bit of cut content, which if you're lucky will be dripped out for free to keep you coming back or if you're Saints Row, it will be sold as DLC that was announced before a gameplay trailer even came out. On top of the bugs, Battlefield 2042 launched with less than half the content of Battlefield 4, and after getting absolutely trashed, an EA executive had the balls to blame the game's negative reception on Halo Infinite for just existing. Coincidentally, another game that launched with only half its content. However, the real kicker is that even when these games do get finished and the bugs are most mostly ironed out, what you couldn't see when your PS4 reverted to a PS2 is that this game is shit. But shit in the way that this game feels like it was created in a boardroom. AAA games no longer take the chances that they could when they were lower budget, and the result is a production line of progressively more boring and less unique games. Most big games these days are a cinematic, open world RPG that, depending on the title, has hints of crafting. Is your favorite franchise feeling a bit stale? No, not really, actually. I'm looking forward to the next one. Have the formula. We're finally putting out our first new IP in a while. Oh, that's cool. Uh, what's new about this one? With the formula. People are so starved for anything that feels remotely different that you have this boring-ass five-hour-long cat game racing to the top of the charts as every reviewer flashes two thumbs up while they explain how it's actually an adventurous atmospheric experience that truly teaches you the ramifications of a post-industrial society. That's all fucking well and nice and call me crazy, but I like fun games. I mean, seriously, who the hell would even play a game that simple? I should probably lower the blade length a little bit, huh? And yes, to the point of some of the comments on my last video, there's nothing wrong with taking inspiration. Sure, everything is derivative. However, bolting on trendy mechanics to make more sales without thinking if it actually fits in your game is my issue. Did Cyberpunk really need rarity and crafting? Did Battlefield need a hero system? Did the Assassin's Creed re boot games have to exist at all. On the flip side, good examples of taking inspiration and properly blending ideas from other products to create something new and great are Neon White, Ultra Kill, or Pal World, which combines the ideas of forced labor and Pokemon. But you know why AAA companies couldn't give an ounce of a shit? Because business is booming, ladies and gentlemen. I'll give you one billion guesses why the next Assassin's Creed game isn't gonna change shit. Don't like it? Well, the best advice actually comes comes from the most famous snake oil salesman, Tadra Coward. If you want us to stop releasing it, stop buying it. The comments of my Saints Row video were flooded with people saying, yeah, I mean, the story looks shit, the characters look cringe, customization looks fine, the game looks nothing like Saints Row, and the gameplay looks mediocre, but yeah, that's an easy cop day one. Meaning if this piece of shit gets a sequel, that's on you. To a similar point, if you keep spending real money on Urkel skins in Fortnite and anime waifus and Genshin Impact, don't act surprised when that shit pops up in a Assassin's Creed. I've gotten to the point where when I see a game that's free, it scares me. Much like Nam, you, you never know what addiction is gonna pop out of those rice fields. And let's not even talk about reboots, remakes, and remasters, because although the vast majority of these are cash grabs, at least you can rest well at night knowing that The Last of Us 1 remake is absolutely not. I mean, at least according to the company that made it. Just like how every criminal didn't do it, and Activision cleared Activision of all wrongdoing. Now, on the other hand, and reboots are a flip of the coin in terms of it either destroying your favorite franchise or bringing it to its highest heights. We've seen some amazing reboots like Hitman, Deus Ex, Doom, or hell even Ready or Not from an indie developer that's making the spiritual successor to a series Activision's had locked away for the better part of the last two decades. These are living proof that you can 
modernize classic games while maintaining what makes them great and not bolting on any bullshit from the current trends box that didn't belong. And before one of you goes bitching in the comments that I just said make classic games play the way they should but make something different, when Hitman is Hitman, Doom is Doom, Ready or Not is Ready or Not, God of War is God of War, and so on, just what the fuck do you think you have? A bunch of completely different games. All in all, the decline of gaming can be attributed to one thing. Money. At the end of all these poor choices is a boardroom of suits that need another private jet, accomplishing their goals of profitability outstandingly while quickly finding out just how little they need to do in order to maintain that. Truly great and unique games are becoming more and more rare. At least AAA games that is because indie devs are killing it. Pal World 2023 people, mark your calendars. Anyways, it's about 3pm and if I'm gonna catch the early bird, I best mosey on out of here. Goodbye.